Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palaces. For my brethren and companions' sakes, I will now say peace be with you. Because of the house of the Lord, our God, I will seek thy good. Thank you. So at this time, we are climbing the hills towards Jerusalem. Jerusalem is mentioned in the Bible for the first time that was taken by the King David from the Jebusite and he changed the name into Or Shalim, which means the city of peace. In a couple of minutes, we're going to pass by a place called Abu Ghosh, which is located at the left side. On the top of that area, we have a, a church called Our Lady of the Ark of the Covenant. That used to be the house of Abinadab, according to the book of Samuel, where King David put the Ark of the Covenant over there for 20 years. After that, he took it to the city of Zion, which is one of the names of Jerusalem, the city of Zion. And that's mentioned in the book of the first Samuel. When we are in the west part of the land, we have uh, several biblical things. We have uh, wars that happened here. We start talking about the war from the Midianite and the war between King David and the Philistines. And we continue talking uh, about the war during the British Mandate. And we end up with the war between the Israeli army and the Palestinians, which ends up here. Which means when you want to control Jerusalem, you have to control the west part of the land. Because that, this is the major road that sends goods to the people who lives there. By the way, we call it road number one. That connect the main Jerusalem. Uh, starting from the Mediterranean Sea, ends up in the Dead Sea. Passing by Jerusalem, which we call it road number one. Kiryat Yari, that's at the right side, which actually is to the left, where it's mentioned in the Bible. As I told you, where King David put the Ark of the Covenant in the house of Abinadab. Considered to be the biggest city from the size of population with one million people. Okay? It's ends on the west from here where we start climbing. East.
the lower part where the cave stands below this church, which we are going to walk around the church, down the stairs to see the cave where the shepherds stay. Okay, come closer to me to hear the information that we... What you see now, we are now in Beth Sahur. We are only 25 minutes far from Bethlehem, where Jesus was born. So the Bible tells us that the angel appeared for the shepherd in this spot, and they were taking care of the goats and the sheep, and they followed the star where the star stopped. Over there was born. Why did they choose, why God chose the shepherd to announce between the people that Jesus was born? Do you have an idea? Simple people. What else? Okay. In the time of the second temple period, the Jews must come three times in a year to the Jerusalem. One of these important times is the Passover. What they used to do in the Passover to bring their sacrifice with them. So once you are a Jewish person and you are living outside the land, it's not easy for you to bring your sacrifice with you and you carry it. Okay? Because it might die on the way. You have to feed her, to bring food for her. It's more logically to bring your money and to buy it here, even if it's more in, uh, expensive. Mm -hmm. According to the book of Isaiah, it says that this sacrificial is supposed to be underneath two years. That's why the shepherd men used to take care of the goat. When it becomes about two years or less, they used to wait till the Passover comes and they sell it to the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. So the Jews, now they need someone to trust. It's not easy to trust someone in your religion especially if you are a Jewish. So they said, we trust these shepherd people. You have to go to the shepherd men, those people who are living in that area, you can buy this goat from them. Like in these days, when you come and buy something from here, say, yo, I trust this person, I bought it, and he sends it to me. That time the same. Now you are going to be the advertising. That time the same. They were the people who had announced, okay, to the Jews that we are good. You take your goat with you, and you have to wait a couple of days before you send it to the temple. So they used to buy it, let's say, on Sunday, wait a couple of days to be sure that this God is not injured, doesn't have any broken bone, and not sick. The same Jesus, when he was on the cross, he wasn't sick, he wasn't having any broken bone. Remember the shoulder, he was going to broken. and the article happened. So the same what's happened over there. So when the angel took the shepherds over there, where Jesus was born in a manger, like the God, in a manger, they have to go back to the Jewish people and tell them, listen, since you believed in us, telling you your sacrificial, you have to believe in us that we saw the original lamb which was bought for flesh and blood in the manger. And so you should, since you believe in the Old Testament, waiting for the Messiah or the sacrifice, that's the one who was born here in Bethlehem, why to grow up and take this thing. Did you get it why they send it? And that's why we know that Herod the Great gave an order to kill the kids underneath to, to use what the age for the goat to be sacrificed. But God released that sacrifice and sent it back after he sent his, his, spent his ministry when he was 30 years old. And Jesus was crucified during the Passover, the same what they used to do, sacrifice something during the Passover. But that was the last sacrifice. Antonio Barluzzi, when he came here, Italian monk, built this church in 1950s, and the church doesn't have any windows, only door, like the cave or the a uh, grotto doesn't have windows, only a gate. That's why when you go inside, you will not find windows, you will find only a gate. And the dome has made from glasses. When the sun goes through mm -hmm. the glass, it looks like the shine of the angel comes wow. upon the people when they are inside. What time would that be? Uh, between uh, September 21 up till December 65. No, I'm just kidding. It's like during <laughs> the day, what you are doing during the sun, when the sun during the, in the middle of the day. The oh, now one of the <laughs> When you go inside, please si silence. You're gonna see three mosaics on the wall. The one at the left side. When you go in, you're gonna see the appearance of the angel to the shepherd. In the center, we can see the nativity church, or where Jesus was born, Virgin Mary carried Jesus, and you can see the star. To the right, we could see a shepherd man carrying the goat and following the star where Jesus was born. The moment you go inside the church, please guys, it's only, you see, visiting is allowed only for five minutes. You can take pictures outside and you can take pictures in the front of the fountain, which over there. On the way, once you finish, you go walking around the church and we go down to see the grotto where the shepherds stayed. And of course, we are going to see a Byzantine city or town which was active in this area.
sang with thoughts of intentions and desires in our heart and mind. Bless each one of us present here. We have carried all our sweetest desires. And Lord, we know that you will grant more than. May you grant us the joy and happiness and gladness that you granted to the shepherds. May we receive the same. Bless us. Fill us up with your spirit. May we always send glory to you. This prayer we make through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Rejoice in the Lord. checking where we can have mass. Usually, they give us outside this area. Thanks for this one gentleman. He helped us to have a mass in this place. Thank you. Um, okay, guys, first, second, which is very important. Those who saw the second place, second cave, which is written number two on it, okay, it used to be one cave in the past. But since a lot of groups come here and they like to have masses, that's why they divide it into two parts and we have several altars around that area. So once we have a mass here or there, the same. But this is the biggest cave where we can have a mass inside. If you look to the ceiling, guys, you can see a shape of a star. Which give you, this was the beginning of the journey to the shepherd where they start to walk from here towards the... Uh, let's say Nativity now, which is Nativity Church, but that part, the Avenger, where Jesus was born. That is the beginning of the journey for them. On the floor, we have mosaics also on the floor to give you a hint of how the oldest church was looked like. This is the only place, please, this is the only place that has been changed during the Byzantine era into a church, which means they changed the cave itself into a, ch a church. They didn't put a church like the rest of the places, okay? The Byzantine era, there was a small town which was active over there, which uncovered in the beginning of 20th century, goes back to the 300 BCE, 400 BCE, the 4th century BCE. People who lived here, what they need, they need to work, especially monks. What they used to work, they used to work with an olive oil. This, the best olive oil that you can get from the Holy Land, from the Middle East, is from Ben Sahel. Near the nativity will be booked and fully, fully, totally full of people, some groups like to celebrate the Mass, the Christmas Mass, in this area. So if you don't succeed to do it in the 
Christmas in the Church of Nativity where Jesus was born. Since you have the book in advance and they will not give a groups to celebrate over there, they only give individuals. Mm -hmm. Most of the groups who were, e who were here in the Holy Land during the Christmas time, they come and celebrate Christmas Mass in this area. That's why we have more than one chapel, we have 10 chapels. Our, the two fathers are coming, they stand up, guys.